It is Tuesday, August 30th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Tuesday puzzle today, so it shouldn't be too much more difficult than yesterday's puzzle, probably around the same difficulty level. And that consistent edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Cynthia Toms, Connor O'Neill, and, as always, the inestimable hood monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for directly supporting this channel. I do very much appreciate that. So thank you to everybody who has done so. And if you choose to do so yourself at the benefactor level, like those five, you can get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug. Uh, You can find more information in the link in the description field underneath the video or patreon.com slash daily solve. And of course, if you back the Patreon campaign at any level, you'll get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And um, do subscribe to the channel. We are creeping closer to 10,000 subscribers, which is very exciting. And you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server where people discuss um, the New York Times crossword, the Daily Wordle, other crosswords, uh, crossword construction. And that's all in the link in the description, description field underneath the video as well. So let's move on to today's puzzle. It is a Tuesday puzzle, of course, so, and it's themed and we can see we see evidence that it's themed because there are some circled cells in the grid, which I really, I have to admit, I really enjoy. Uh, It was constructed by Emily Carroll, who has constructed, um, I think, 15 puzzles. This might be her 15th, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's get going. All right. Guadalajara goodbye. Is it simply adios? Hopefully it's the most straightforward answer to that clue. And puts away as the groceries... Well, there's a question mark there, so that indicates some kind of pun or wordplay. So you might think put them away in the pantry, for instance, but no, in this case, I think it means put away as in eats in a a punnier sort of way. But let's check the crosses because it might not be. Lead into freak or friendly. You could be an an eco-freak or you'd be eco-friendly. And then actress Harmon of TNT's Rizzoli and Isles. Don't think I've ever heard of Rizzoli and Isles, but but I think Angie Harmon? Angie Harmon is an actor, I think. Is that right? Let's look at this. Yeah, okay. Popular site for tech reviews is CNET, a website. And then shirts lacking buttons informally. Oh, tees, t-shirts, right. I don't know why that seemed mysterious to me for a moment. Curved molding um, is an, uh, an ogee. Is it ogee or ogee? It's one of the, this is another term where I know the term architecturally, but I don't, I never have cause to say it aloud. <laughs> You've discovered that doing these videos, the things you realized, they seem like they're things you know, and then you realize maybe you don't know how to even say them. Anyway, uh, waxy biochemical compound. It's not sterno, is it? What is this? Most workers on a, a kibbutz would be Israeli. Is um, Club wielding bogey woman. Oh, who is that? Is it Baba Yaga? No. She doesn't wield a club. She wields more of a, uh, she has a mortar and pestle. She wields the pestle? (laughs) Which part is the pestle? She flies around in the mortar, the sort of basin of it. And she lives in a house on chicken legs. Okay, I think. Am I Am I confusing anything? I think that's all Baba Yaga. Anyway, it doesn't really matter because it's not the answer to this clue. Club wielding bogey woman. Who is that? Um, we'll have to see. Best effort informally. Bring your A game. Bring your best effort. And Monrovia's land. Monrovia's land. Eurasia. What is this getting at? Quick on one's feet. And flatbreads that may be served with sog paneer rotis. Indian, uh, an Indian flatbread. Garb is dress. So collectively. Um, non-vegan pie crust ingredient. You could cook with lard, which is certainly non-vegan. I actually do. I, I do sometimes cook with lard, actually. Um, all right. Quick on one's feet is agile. And composer Stravinsky, Igor Stravinsky, um, uh, the Rite of Spring and the Firebird. Great pieces of music. 
Okay, a quick snack could be a bite. And, oh, a club-wielding bogeywoman and ogress. Okay, right, I suppose ogres and, by extension, ogresses are often depicted with clubs, I suppose. Yeah, that's, that does seem right. Okay, so the waxy chemical biochemical combat. I didn't think it actually was Sterno, and now I'm certain it's not. So what is it? What is this? Oh, and look, we have something in the... We're starting to get things in the... Um, the um, Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to click on that, but that's a highlight, the sport. So... Energy... Energized or energizes or something, maybe. Automaker based in Hiroshima. Mazda, right. Oh, so Monrovia's land is Liberia. Oh, I guess I was, that must be the city. I was, I guess I was, what, inventing a country, I suppose? Whoops, That's, that was silly. <laughs> okay, so uh, Gusto is zeal. You do something with gusto, with enthusiasm, with zeal. And a couple of bucks is... Oh, oh, is it does? So female deer as opposed to a buck, a male, and a, do, do, a couple of bucks. Do, no, it doesn't quite work. I was thinking a couple as in a partner of bucks. But if that were true, this would have to be a single doe because it says Oh, no, no, it's not. Well, no, no, because the couple isn't, isn't a quantity in, in my reading. It's, it's, it means, it would mean a single mate of bucks. So what is that? Oh, maybe it's just deer. <laughs> maybe it's simple, simpler than I'm making it. It just means two bucks, two, two deer. Okay, there we go. Epileptologist's test for short. Is that, is that an EEG? I don't remember what that stands for. It's some medical test. So I guess this is checking for epilepsy. I'm actually not, not sure about any of this. What about this Taj Mahal city? Oh, there we go. Well, that's Agra. So that, that works with the EEG guess. And then a manipulative type. Oh. Oh, maybe something's wrong here. Well, so energizer is, energizer is correct. So someone who energizes and then manipul manipulative type a user a what who would this be oh yeah gusto could be zest yeah okay that's fine that that's probably better actually than zeal so it's it's not so much zeal it's not so much ardency zeal so much as it is elan panache gusto zest yeah that seems fair enough that's that's better so manipulative, manipulative, manipulatives, can't seem to say that word very well, can I? A manipulative type is a user, and then to fix as tangles of hair or traffic is to unsnag or unsnarl, maybe? A Hyundai Compact named North American Car of the Year in 2021. I think the Hyundai Elantra is a car model, so that's probably the answer. If you're not seeing eye to eye, you're at odds, maybe? And is it too audacious of me? Dare I? Dare I suggest this crossword answer? More arid is drier, more dry. And small, a small jazz combo, so a jazz combo, just a small jazz group, a small little jazz collection of players would be a trio, three of them would be on the small side. And a pager alert could be beep. Oh, that's funny. The other day we had something like beep producer or something, and the answer was pager. Oh, C-17 across. What is that? Oh, it's our revealer, of course. Of course, that's where the revealer would be. Um, with 69 across, beginner's downhill challenge. Or a hint to the punny's puzzles circled letters. Well, beginner's ski slopes are often called the bunny slopes. So a beginner's downhill skiing challenge could be a bunny slope. And then here we have the Emerald Isle, which is Ira. I'm sorry, I'm saying that terribly. <laughs> name for Ireland, and then easygoing reply to, I'm sorry, is don't be. Anyway, so let's, sorry, let's let's look back at this revealer since we found it. So a hint to this puzzle circled letters. Oh, so we have, oh, I see, bunny slope. So this is referring to Energizer, the brand 
of batteries for for elect, electronics devices, and the um, they use a bunny as their mascot. Uh, they use a sort of battery powered bunny that keeps going forever, and they say it keeps going and going, etc. And so here is one of our bunny slopes, is our energizer bunny. So then, what is this one? Faster bunny? What is that? Or something? Master? Why can't I see what that is? Oh, Easter. <laughs> Easter, of course. When you see this collection of letters, it's so much more common in English for this to be preceded by a consonant. So I just wasn't thinking about vowels, but of course it's an Easter bunny. And then freezing would be gelid. Oops. That's a bit of, that's, that's, that's upping the vocab for a Tuesday just slightly, I would say. And then what about, well, we're not going to know what this is until we have some cloth crosses. So top toy for a holiday, a dreidel, um, a spinning, a spinning top, um, associated with Judaism, with Hanukkah. And then visually blah is drab. And a German, the, a German industrial region, the Ruhr, again, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, I apologize. Um, that's also maybe it's just slightly tricky for a Tuesday. Side sounds are ahs. Maybe someone, <laughs> I don't remember who it was, but someone in the comments yesterday sort of, or maybe it was in the Daily Solve Discord chat server, I can't remember which, it was one of the two took issue to sort of ahs and oohs and oh hoes and ahas. I, I'm sympathetic to that. I'm sympathetic to that complaint, I must say. They're also vague. Okay, competitor of Petro Canada. I'm actually not familiar with Petro. I don't think I've ever seen Petro Canada before, but it really sounds like an oil company does it. So it must be ESO, which is the sort of phonetic adaptation of the former standard oil, S, the letters S-O. Reddish hue would be the color rust. Oh, and here we have dust bunny. So it, it going down in the, um, it's hard to indicate this because we can only select things uh, orthogonally here, but the D-U-S-T, dust bunny, in one of our theme circled answers. All right, so a soup base could be broth. You could make a soup from broth. And John Arbuckle's dog is Odie, you have referenced in a recent puzzle as having a big red tongue, and I sort of just missed that whole clue. Well, I saw it and then didn't get it and then forgot Oscar winner Brody, Adrian Brody is an actor, and peevish moods are snits. You could be in a bit of a snit. Spend indulgently is to splurge, and a contra contraceptive insert in brief is an IUD. Um, and, uh, you know, a, a, a contraceptive device, I guess it says it in the <laughs> clue. Don't really need to explain that. A midnight excursion to the fridge is a raid, a midnight raid of the... Uh, of the fridge. And an Olympic event with gates is the, is a slalom, you know, the sort of zigzaggy skiing competition. And then insignificant sort is a twerp, maybe? Yeah, to, to use a divining rod is to douse for water, that um, uh, kind of folk tradition, I guess. And then insignificant sort is right a twerp. And then a subtle signal that may accompany a wink is a sly nod, perhaps. Those two things are in the same kind of category. If one took responsibility for someone, one owned it. And a melee is a brawl. Fraka, fight. Pop group with the 1976 hit Money, Money, Money is, of course, ABBA, the great ABBA. And part of AWOL is absent without leave is the military... Um, Military initialism, or I guess it's an acronym because we pronounce it AWOL. Okay. I think I, I think for years I thought that was away without leave, and it was only within the last few years that I realized it was absent. Anyway, to clobber someone is to drub them. Yeah, you could refer to a clobbering in a, a victory drubbing. And Johns in Scotland are Ian's. So there we go, Ian, John, uh, related names. Okay, large paper unit would be a ream of paper, and major letdowns for Rapunzel. So Rapunzel famously let down her extremely long hair to allow her prince to climb up the tower, and so uh, her letdowns are her tresses, her hair. Small, oh, that's, that's nice. So we have a large paper unit is a ream, 
and a small paper unit is a sheet. So single unit of paper is a sheet, whereas a large unit of paper collectively is a ream. That's that's nice. Revenue for Madison Avenue firms is ad income or ad rate or something? I'm not sure. Something like that. Madison Avenue famously is where the advertising agencies were located. I don't know how true that still is. I'm sure there are still some there. Uh, I, I have no idea how sort of universal that is. I suspect they're more spread out now. All right. If you shook on it, you agreed. And long-limbed, and, and sorry, Madison Avenue in New York City. That was probably obvious, but didn't mention it. Okay. So Downton, for one, an Abbey, I suppose, in the in the program Downton Abbey. Is that what it's referring to? I mean, it is no longer an abbey in the program, but it's presumably named as such because fictionally it once was. Although I don't think the actual real building, which is Highclere Castle, I don't think, I don't know if it ever was an abbey. I don't think it was. Braggadocious is boastful. And tush, I'm just referring to one's tush, one's rear. Um... Why can't I see it? What about this? Cheese that's not bada. Oh, it's not, it's not bada. It's not, it's, it's gouda. It's gouda. It's not bada. Very, very clever. Extremely ridiculous. There's a dad joke for you. Okay. Long limbed and lean. Um, rail thin. What is that? Tush. Oh, I guess trusses is wrong. Hmm. So is your tush your butt? And then long-limbed, what is this all? Beat narrowly without is edge out. No, that still doesn't look right. Happy shouts are yaws. So this is tresses and then, okay, I have something obviously incorrect here. Yays, raggy. Bugs, tush. Oh, your buns. Right. I just wasn't thinking of it as something that could be pluralized because sort of similarly to when I was um, trying to find the first letter of Easter here, I was just stuck on how most of the time this would work. Tush is singular. So I was looking for a singular word, but no, your buns collectively has the same meaning. Okay, there we go. So long lim limbed and lean is rangy. So happy shouts is are yays. There we go. All right. That was surprisingly tricky in that little zone down there for me, just the way that it hit me. So revenue for Madison Avenue firms could be ad fees. And then one's not inclined to make sweeping gestures are... This is punny. So this is probably referring to something literally sweeping as opposed to metaphorically sweeping, meaning all-encompassing. But I'm not sure. Girl Scouts accessory, a sash. Scouts Scouts often seem to have sashes. And then a school that used to bring a live bear onto the field at its home football games. Well, that sounds similar to uh, the live tiger that we, we heard about the other day. But obviously it's not, it's a completely different animal, so it won't be the same school. So US, no, UCLA. Well, Because the, the UCLA are, the, are Bru, the Bruins, right? And that's a bear, so maybe they did. I mean, another UC, UC Berkeley, which is where I went to school, the mascot was the golden bear. I don't think there was ever a real bear as far as I'm aware. Um, so supply, I don't know why I'm focusing on this. Why don't I just look at the crosses? <laughs> supply and demand, subject, economics, and then actor Idris, Idris Elba, a great actor, and then... Let's just check the crosses before we put this in. I'll pass is na, and one's not inclined to make sweeping gestures. I see slobs. They won't sweep up the floor. And then UCLA is indeed the school with the live bear. Okay, that's the University of California at Los Angeles. Okay, so, and there we go. I would say that was noticeably trickier than the Monday puzzle. Not, not to the point of making it um, a brutally difficult puzzle. It was still, I think, pretty approachable, but I would say, you know, perceivably more difficult than the Monday puzzle. Just some more tricky knowledge scattered throughout, I would say. Um, a little bit tougher. Let me know if you, if you agree. And anyway, we have this fun 
bunny theme. Oh, and we never looked at this one. So here's Bugs Bunny, of course. So we have our our bunny slope. And this is a funny little revealer position because it is sort of simultaneously, it simultaneously is and isn't in the uh, general region predicted by Lyle's law, the the uh, um, prediction formulated by Daily Solved viewer Lyle, which states that the revealer, which is the explanatory theme that ties together, uh, explanatory clue, I'm sorry, and answer that tie together the puzzle's theme, will generally be located in the across answers towards the end of the puzzle, generally in the sort of southeast corner of the grid around there. And this is sort of, except the actual revealer text is on this clue in the complete opposite corner. So look at that. Anyway, bunny slope. And we had our Energizer bunny, our Dust bunny. I forget if we looked at that one. Our Easter bunny and Bugs bunny, the character. So there we go. Uh, we have four theme answers filling circles in the grid, which, as I said, I, I do always enjoy. And uh, four different notable bunnies. So there we have it. Uh, nice, nice puzzle from Emily Carroll. And... Uh, that's that for the puzzle today. So I think I just actually only pulled out a single clue from yesterday's puzzle. Apologies if I'm missing something important, but this was the one that I saw that seemed, uh, because I thought it was particularly interesting here. So George Steele says, uh, speaking of the riot act etymology, so for, uh, etymology of the phrase reading someone the riot act, which is used generally metaphorically, at one point it was used in a more literal sense, to refer to an early 1700s English law, which had to be read aloud to a crowd, giving them an hour to disperse or face arrest. Yeah, I looked that up as well. I think it was passed in 18, or sorry, 1715 or so, and was, ended up, was eventually re repealed and supplanted by more modern laws between, I think, 1963 and 1975 in England and Wales. So there we go. Uh, now you know. Now you know what it what it once meant when people said, when people refer to reading someone the riot act, and that's that for today's puzzle. That's it for yesterday's clues for today's puzzle, and for today's video. So I'll be back tomorrow, of course, for the Wednesday puzzle, which, I mean, today was a bit of a step up in difficulty. In fact, I thought, but tomorrow may well be one again. It'll still be themed, and I hope you join me for that solve. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care.